Hey yo, what's good, y'all? This your boy KGR, Cool G Rap. For those that don't know, CQNYC, home of the thoroughbreds. And right now, y'all watching Montreal. You heard? I was a class clown, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a very humorous character. You know what I mean? I like to laugh. I like to make people laugh. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I was always entertaining the classroom and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, when it came down to um, having to get my work done, I did do that. Well, from young, like from the age 13, I mean, um, I would deliver newspapers. I, I tried that once. I delivered Chinese food. You know what I'm saying? Cause I lived in the hood where the, um, the Chinese cast that had the Chinese restaurant in the hood, they would um, embrace the young black kids. You know what I'm saying? A little different from what like what they show in like um the the movie um uh, Minister, uh, Minister Society. We see like the Korean store owner and they kind of prejudice, you know what I mean? He make a funny remark and all that. It was a little different, like you no, know, this is when I was living in Left Rack City. You know what I'm saying? Nori made it famous as Iraq. I delivered Chinese food when I was like 13. I would pack bags in supermarkets, all that, before I got into uh, illegal street shit. I helped my moms move, you know, so I took care of family, basically. That was my whole um, <clears throat> driving force for even doing this shit, is to um, give myself a better life <clears throat> and to provide for my family. So it was, um, as soon as I got like the first big check and all that from the music thing, I moved my mother, I moved myself, yada yada. Took care of wifey at the time, you know what I mean? This shit like that, I took care of family. I would get a nice car, you know what I'm saying? But not the most expensive car. But I would always live in a nice place. That always came first to me, like my um, <clears throat> my home situation. I wasn't one of them dudes that'd park a, um, 600 bins in front of the projects. First would be knowing yourself, you know what I'm saying? And I say that because I think a lot of people don't take the time to really get to know themselves. Like a lot of people base themselves on their name, like what's on their birth certificate and shit like that. <clears throat> but that's not knowing yourself. When you really get to know yourself, then you know what your calling is. You know what I'm saying? You you know what, what it is that you that you should bring to the world and it's gonna um pay off for you in the long run. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows themselves right outside the gate um, right outside the gate when you're not taught that. You know what I'm saying? It took me a long time, a long time to learn the true meaning of that. <laughs> wow, favorite cartoon character. Mm. I think I would have to give that to Bugs Bunny. Cause Flintstones, I'm gonna give you a comparison. Flintstones is like a a kid's version of like the honeymooners. You know what I'm saying? And even with the Flintstones, you watching that at a very young age, your mind capacity had to be at a certain level. To, to, to really get everything besides the colors of how the cartoon looks and the drawings and stuff like that which attract kids but to get some of the humor you know you had to, your, your, your um, mind capacity had to be at a certain level you know what I'm saying but Bugs Bunny is just real direct like for even a baby at in, in, in um, infancy stages would get that you know what I'm saying would, would laugh at some of the things that happen in the Bugs Bunny cartoon a Flintstones, you have to have like a certain level of maturity. Wow. Favorite video game? I couldn't really say a favorite, even though I had Atari like at the age of like around 13 and um, Space Invaders and yada yada and all that, which was great. It was magnificent for that time. But a favorite video game, it, 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 that started when Sony PlayStation came out. You know what I'm saying? I would have to say like um, games like Tomb Raider and Resident Evil. Gems. Jewels. Absolutely. Really shit I ever wrote. I think that would, have to, that would have to be the first lead single off my first album, Road to the Riches. I used to stand on the block selling cooked up rock, money busting out my sock because I really would clock. Dealt with all kind of fiends, bringing jackets and jeans, magazines, anything just to hustle up beans. The cash was coming fast, money grew like grass. People hungry for the blast that don't even last. Didn't want to be involved, but the money would get you getting richer and richer. Then police took my picture. You know what I mean? Like, that shit was real shit. I was standing on the block one time, police rolled by. 
took my picture and shit. I me mean, standing on the block, doing my thing. Eminem, Jay Z, um, Raekwon, um, Styles P. Um, these these are all dudes that I love. You know what I'm saying? To me, as you notice, I name dudes that's like maybe more up there in the mainstream, and I name dudes that's a little more under the radar than that. You know what I mean? But I can mix with any of those cats. The type of shit that they do is right up my alley. I think New York is just affected by what's going on in general, like a lot of places might be. And that's the, uh, the total domination of the South Sound, um, the South Sound dominating hip hop in general. A lot of dudes might be mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Everything evolves, everything changes. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was a time when it was just a, a New York sound that was dominant throughout the genre of hip hop. And then it, it kind of switched over, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's, the cats from the South are struggling during the, um, the, the times of Run DMC, LL Cool J, and, and um, uh, what a lot of people call the Golden Era. Um, the Golden Era, which is me, myself, Rakim, Big Daddy King, KRS One, when hip hop was a New York sound dominated genre of music, you know what I'm saying? So can't be mad at them now, you know what I'm saying, for coming up. Right now, holding down a torch for New York. It might not be nobody on the mainstream except for the, <laughs> you know, the the names we all know. You know what I'm saying? Like a Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? That's still doing it to the iconic level. You know what I'm saying? That's from NY and still holding it down like that. Yeah, I mean, um, I embrace talent. I don't care where it comes from, you know what I'm saying, and um, and I definitely heard talent, and, and uh, to me, um, NWA, NWA was incredible, Ice Cube solo was incredible, Ghetto Boys was incredible, Scarface solo, incredible, you know what I'm saying, and um, as much as the G-Rap might have inspired those dudes, because I know they mentioned my names mm -hmm. at one time or the other, as much as I might have inspired them, they inspired me as well, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and it's... It's all about relatable topics. You know, I don't care where you're from, what region you're from, what country you're from. If you're spitting some shit that's about struggle, anybody can relate to that shit. And I think that's why hip hop became one of the most explosive genres of music in general. It's because, you know, you talk about struggle, somebody in fucking Germany, they can relate to that. Somebody in the Middle East can relate to that. Somebody anywhere, anywhere in the fucking world can relate to struggle. Um, well, the first time I met 50, I was going to a a, um, a place where a lot of people in Queens go to buy jewelry, and, and that was like a, at the Coliseum. I was going to the jeweler at the time, and then 50 was at the jeweler. You know what I mean? And um, my ex that I was with at the time knew 50 too, because they're from the same hood. So she introduced us, you know what I'm saying? She, she called him Bob Boo. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, people that know 50 in the hood call him Boo. Some people call him Boo. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was his nickname. You know what I mean? She was like, yo, G this boo, and, and boo this G, yada yada. You know what I mean? And we met and shit. You know what I mean? And, and um, I kind of noticed 50 had a vest on under his clothing. You know what I'm saying? And I was thinking to myself, like, damn, that, that was kind of noticeable. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Cass got, try to get at him, you know what I mean? They, they might try to go at his top, because it was noticeable that he had a vest on. You know what I mean? And that kind of stuck with me, you know what I'm saying? But you no know, shit happened. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad 50 made it through. Yada yada. His fucking life story is incredible. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody would have put his life story in a movie without it actually happening in reality, it would have been unbelievable. You know, like that type of shit don't happen. Get the fuck out of here. Somebody beat death and, and then and then blow up to be the biggest rap icon ever. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad he triumphed like that. He triumphed over his enemies and all that. You know what I'm saying? Big shout to 50. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 50 reached out a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? I got mad. He invited me to his crib and all that. And I got mad love for 50 back. I just hope, you know, he, he be safe for you. If he is going through something, he get over that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he's, he's one of the main contributors of hip-hop. He's a hero to hip-hop. You know what I mean? You know, I got I got love for DMX. And I got a lot of respect from homie. You know what I'm saying? He's he's somebody big in hip hop to me. 
You know what I mean? He, he contributed a lot to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I got a hat off respect for DMX. The, the, the young cats ain't from that era. You know what I'm saying? They, they can't identify with respecting OGs and shit like that. You know what I mean? But from my era, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was born in the late 60s. But I actually grew up and all that. I actually grew up in the 80s. You know what I mean? That's that's when I hit the streets and all that was during the 80s. And um, you had a natural instinct to respect the OGs at that time. You know what I'm saying? But somewhere after the 80s and the crack era and all that shit, and crack coming in into play, it seemed like that shit created like a gap in generations. You know what I'm saying? Because you had so many cracked out mothers and cracked babies and shit like that. Kids that might have been raised by their grandmothers. You know what I'm saying? So they kind of lost the, the respect level for like the mothers and fathers. You know what I'm saying? The aunties and uncles. You know what I'm saying? Because in so many situations, grandmothers had to raise grandbabies and shit like that. You know what I mean? Wow. I don't know if I should go there like that. <laughs> Might be offensive to a lot of people, but you know, a lot of people should really just really dig deep and study the history of religions. You know what I mean? I ain't talking about being spiritual. Being spiritual is one thing. Religions is something totally different. And people gotta learn to differentiate the two. You know, study religion. True definition of a G is staying true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not following what society say or, or what the streets say is the true definition of a G. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, it's being true to yourself to me. You know what I'm saying? If you're a man, you're going to be a man regardless. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to follow anybody's um, so-called protocols and all that. Being a G and the definition of being a G from the hood. You know what I'm saying? That's, that might be one definition. But being a G, say if you never even was, say if you wasn't raised in the hood, I believe a person could be a G. <clears throat> to me, Gandhi's a fucking G. Look at all the danger and shit he faced. Martin Luther King is a G. You know what I'm saying? He gave his last speech, like, you could tell by his uh, rhetoric that he, he knew, he pretty much knew what he was facing in, 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 um, in, 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 in not too long in the future, in the near future. He knew, he knew what he was up against. That was a, that's a real G to me. Facing that, you know, and still doing, getting his message across. Still doing what he got to do. You know what I mean? That's a G to me. Message to the youth is please wake up, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> wake up, you know what I mean? Um, unplug from the matrix, you know what I'm saying? Like, we need that. Humanity need that. And if you're, um, you're paying attention to what's going on in the world in general, you see we're in very dire need of that. You know what I'm saying? The whole of humanity is at risk if you don't wake up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all the future. The youth is always the future. You know what I'm saying? So we need y'all to be on point and just unplug from the matrix. Don't get caught up in all this social network shit where it dominates your life and all that. You know what I'm saying? Use the, use the internet as a tool to learn. You know what I'm saying? Because knowledge is power. And that's the best, best message I can send to the youth right now.